So this video is going to be a, a walkthrough of my home studio setup. I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time, but I just keep ordering new stuff and things change and I'm, I'm always like, oh, I need it to be perfect before I make a video. And um, just a heads up really in terms of this video, nothing is sponsored. I've got about 100 subscribers at the minute, just so. So everything's going to be my own opinions and whether I like something or not is not down to a sponsor. The heart and soul of a good setup is definitely a really powerful computer. This is a custom PC that I built myself. I was quite fortunate actually just because I used the money that I made from Formula E to build this PC and uh, so I'm really grateful for that. I've always put the money back into my business whenever I've earned some money and uh, it's really great for 4K video editing and even 8K video editing. Now, all the specs that are, the PC has I'm going to list in this chart just because um, I can't remember them off by heart and uh, with the PC, everything is RGB controlled pretty much, which is really cool. It's a bit of a gimmick, but it looks nice at night when you can turn everything off and you can colour code everything if you're quite OCD like myself. And that's just some footage of my first ever PC, which um, was quite bad. My current laptop is the Asus Zephyrus G14. It's a really nice laptop because it's very lightweight and portable and it has really great battery life, about four or five hours roughly. And also you can animate the back of the screen, which is really cool. You can play GIFs and emojis and uh, have text. It's a bit of a gimmick, but it's cool to show people. In terms of the acoustic setup in this room, I have sound panels everywhere. They're kind of just for looks, but actually they do help to dampen the sound and cut out some of the vibrations. I also have KRK speakers. These are really high quality speakers and they match the room, I guess, just because they're white. One complaint I have about the speakers are that it's difficult to access the control just because they're at the back. So it'd be nice if there was at the side, but it's not a big issue. I also have a Scarlett audio interface. An audio interface is basically a sound card for your computer and it improves the sound quality and you can connect external microphones and that sort of thing just so you can get better quality audio. I have an Audio-Technica mic, which I plug into that. For my keyboard and mouse setup, I've gone with Logitech with the MX series. Logitech are actually quite a good company they actually refunded me and gave me a brand new keyboard when mine went in for warranty. So they're quite good in terms of customer service and it has quite a sleek and professional look. You can also map a lot of the buttons so it's quite good for things like editing and productivity. In terms of my headphones, I primarily use M50s. They're really great but one complaint I have about them are the earpieces can wear out over time but you can always replace them but in terms of headphones for mixing audio and also recording audio on location. They're fantastic and they're really high quality in terms of the sound that you get. I also have some Sony wireless earbuds. They're really great as well just because the noise cancelling is amazing. The only worry is they are quite expensive and I do have a habit of just randomly leaving earbuds everywhere so if you're going to invest in some high quality earbuds definitely be very careful with them and don't have lazy habits like I do of just leaving them out anywhere. The mouse mat which sits under my Logitech gear, it's from Etsy, it's homemade. I was looking at mouse mats and a lot of them on Amazon I didn't think were the highest quality for the price so it's definitely better to get a custom homemade one. I'll leave a link in the description to the people that made this. Hung up in my room I've got some of my awards as well as uh, the feature that I was in the paper in the Sheffield Star, which was a great, amazing feeling. I also have the article from the Barnsley Chronicle on my wall. I also have my badges and cards from all the countries I've visited, including Amsterdam, Mexico, and all around the world, really. I like to keep them as mementos. And also, I have um, the photo of Malum Cove up at the top. Finally, on my shelves, I have my collection of vintage lenses. These are really cool for anyone who's getting started in filmmaking. Lenses can be thousands and thousands of pounds, but actually vintage lenses are really cool just because they give you that unique and uh, look. There's a lot of cameras today. They're quite overly sharp and all cameras pretty much now are digital. So it gives you a more of a vintage, softer look. I'm not going to go into too much detail about lenses, but the main one that I'm going to talk about is the Helios lens. It gives you a nice swirly, bokery look. It's quite an old Russian lens, so but actually these were produced in quite high numbers so you can get these really cheap. There'll be some text on the screen now that talks about the other lenses or I'll be linking it in the description. In the description there'll be a full list of all the camera gear that I have. As you're probably aware, I have the Mavic 3 Pro in terms of my drone. It's just an amazing drone. I think the main difference for me in terms of comparing it to the Mavic 2 is just that extra camera. 
there have been so many times where I've been like, I just want to punch in and get a closer shot, but it's just impossible really when you've got a fixed lens. But having that telephoto lens is really cool and you can get those close up types of shots in areas maybe where you shouldn't be getting that close. But actually I think it just adds an extra layer of safety. You don't have to get as close anymore to your subjects, uh, which makes the whole experience safer and you can have more confidence in with your clients. In terms of my cameras that I currently have, I have the EOS R as my vlogging kind of camera, but um, more typically I use the FS7, which which is usually rented in. But in terms of cameras that I own at the minute, I have the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. It's a really great camera just for, you know, travel films, that sort of thing. and. Uh, and commercial shoots and uh, on bigger jobs I'll use the RED cameras and ARRI cameras sometimes and uh, I also have the Insta360 camera this is really fantastic I used it on the Cornwall travel film uh, which I'm going to link in the description I'll probably link on the screen now and it's a really great camera you can get those 360 shots and I think it's a better camera than GoPros in my opinion just because of the customizability of the product and it has the GoPro mount as well and uh, I used it on the head mount when I went on the zip line. But actually it was quite scary just because um, the camera was quite expensive. It was about £600 altogether and it's just scary that you've got that much money on your head. But luckily it's quite a robust system and uh, I do trust it uh, now that I've been on the zip line. In terms of the camera bag that I use, it's a Porter Brace camera bag. Porter Brace are a very good, reliable brand. They specialise in making camera bags and support systems are in the broadcast industry so they're very robust the bags are really really expensive though so definitely look on ebay you can get them second hand i got this bag here second hand and it was really good i use the zen phone 8 flip as my daily driver phone what's really cool about this phone is the camera actually flips so it rotates and it's just a cool thing to show people i guess that some people just uh, mention i talk about it too much but it's really cool just because it's it's good for vlogging because a lot of phones have terrible front facing cameras but now you can use your back camera, your best camera for everything. And also I have these adapters and cables here. These allow you to plug your Rode Wireless Go and also to plug in a Rode microphone to get better audio in terms of when you're filming with your phone. I also have the Revo ring. This is really cool for any cameras that don't have an ND filter built in. It allows you to change the thread size of your ND filter without having to use step down rings or step up rings. And this saves you a lot of time and it's just a lot more financially convenient to be able to just buy one adapter opposed to buying like 10 or 15 step down rings. In terms of my lighting setup currently, I use exclusively aperture lights. Well, I don't use exclusively aperture lights. I only own aperture lights, but obviously on bigger jobs, I'll use massive HMI lights and that sort of thing. Aperture are really good just because LED lighting is definitely taking over and they're getting more and more powerful and more features like RGB. And they have a nice ecosystem using the Sidus Link app and you can control all the lights from the app. To go through all my lights, I have the Aperture MC lights. These are really cool just because they're magnetic and you can stick them behind different things. They're behind the speakers now currently in this room and uh, they create a nice lighting effect. I also have, which is actually coming soon, I have the P60 lights. These are really cool. They are RGB lights and uh, and what I really like about these lights are they're really small and portable and you can put them anywhere and it's just a nice light you can have in your kit just for a quick interview where you've only got like 30 seconds to set it up and I also have the 300D light you can use this light for more outdoor stuff in terms of old power in the sun and also for lighting night exterior shots in terms of recreating moonlight for example they also have the bigger 600 lights and also the massive uh, NOVA panel, which are worth checking out, which I've used on a certain few jobs, which have been hired in. Aperture also make a really cool bulb light, which I'm gonna link the text here. And uh, this light's really cool just because it helps you replace the standard practical bulb, and it can do a variety of different lighting effects, such as thunder and lightning and faulty bulb. And that's something that I need to mention about all these lights. They all have custom lighting effects that can be programmed and uh, into what you want really, and you can change the intensity the Aperture 300D has the Bowens mount as well as 60D. This Bowens mount is really cool just because you can apply a lot of lighting modifiers such as Fresnels, which allow you to spot and focus the light and barn doors and that sort of thing. And also it has a massive softbox, the 300D, which I can attach to it. The 60D lights are also fantastic just because they mimic the same effect you can get with dado lights and they're much more affordable. 
you can get very nice cuts in terms of your lights and you can definitely create that film noir look. And just to finish the video off, I'm going to talk about my audio kit, which is very important. Currently now I'm using the Rode Wireless Go 2. It's a really great audio system just because it gives you redundancy and peace of mind because actually the transmitter actually records straight to the actual thing, which is really good, just so you've got a backup. And also it will record straight into the camera. So if you lose wireless signal, for example, you'll be covered. As a shotgun mic, I use the Rode VidMic NTG, which is really cool. It has a built-in battery. I also have lots of cables, adapters, that sort of thing and again it would take forever to go into it all so I've, I've, in the description I've got a kit list and it breaks down into detail how each piece of camera equipment is used and audio equipment. As my primarily audio recorder I use a Zoom H8. It's really great just for plugging into the DJ's desk or for using on narrative and short projects. I want to say a massive thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn more about the Mavic 3 and also more about drones, definitely subscribe to my channel and check out the annotated video here, which is my review with the Mavic 3. So this video is going to be a quick update on what's new with the setup because it's been about a year and obviously I've bought new stuff. So pretty much I got a standing desk and the model number is going to be displayed above here. And it has these various different settings. It goes up quite slow so you can program it and you can have different settings for different heights which is pretty cool and obviously make sure that that doesn't get blocked by this light. Basically I configured the light, uh, the aperture LED RGB light that I mentioned before so that I, it can be ready for setup in terms of YouTube. Some of my new drones that I've got, I've got the Defender 25, this is a really cool drone, it's an alternative to the Avada for example. And I'm uh, going to be reviewing this soon, so that will be quite cool, so stay tuned for that. But overall, if you want experience with Betaflight and to configure and customise everything, you go with this. And then I've got this iFlight drone as well, the Nazgul. This is also a really cool FPV drone, particularly if you want an alternative to DJI FPV drone, that's a bit more durable. But obviously you don't have the, um, actually you do, you do have the return to home if you configure GPS rescue of this drone. But it's a really cool drone and I'll be reviewing that as well. And obviously these have got the new air unit, which is pretty cool. In terms of what else is new, I've got the new version of the Insta360 One RS, which is the new model of that. I also picked up the FPV drone bag from iFlight. This is also really cool and um, I'll be reviewing this as well soon and pretty much just the housing for um, all your FPV drones and it obviously it lights up as well which is pretty cool. I also have the Avata again on my channel if you want a review of that check that out. I also have a power bank for some FPV drones which is quite cool. Some other additions are that I have the Tascam Porter Capture AX recorder, which is also pretty cool. It's again, it's an upgrade over the Zoom H6 what I had before or H8, and uh, it just gives you a nice big screen and it's really nice for your recording. I also picked up this aperture. It's kind of like a lights here if you know what I mean find the on button for it so yeah it's um it can display a lot of lighting effects uh, it's quite cool in that sense um, it's good for your background light and that sort of thing and it gives you nice light for your setup just turn oops just turn that off also picked up this camera bag yeah, just an upgrade over the uh, Think Tank one because unfortunately that kind of got lost, which isn't great. And then the final thing, or the, the thing that I'm most pleased with, is this new 4K monitor that I picked up. I had a, before I had a massive um, high sense screen that was mounted on the wall. That was really cool, but if you want to go for like a standing desk, obviously I wanted something that I could have on the desk. And what's really cool about this monitor is if you can see there, it doesn't take up a lot of space on your desk, so you can put stuff there. This will actually work and turn on. Because I did have a problem where I actually ordered three monitors 
and um, they all were broken. So it's always a risk when you go to like a, a cellar which is, uh, you know, when it's reconditioned or refurbished. Um, so pretty, we've got this monitor, it's really cool. I um, fully recommend it, it's about 144 hertz, so it's really cool for any gaming you're going to be doing. And that wallpaper's pretty cool. And yeah, I also picked up the new audio interface, uh, Scarlet, which is quite cool, the newest version of it. Got our Xbox controllers here, which are obviously really cool for, they're all modded. Got the Anefi door cam, which is cool for monitoring our packages that come. We got some custom other stuff. And yeah, these are all pretty cool things. And just before I go, some signed England memorabilia in this room get the light on yes yeah, some signed England memorabilia got some Nottingham Forest stuff here and also a signed Diego Jota shirt but yeah thanks guys for watching this also got a canvas that I got printed my own personal photo that I took of Hemingfield Yeah, thanks guys for watching this and uh, yeah, just a point to note, if, if you're going to have a standing desk, obviously you probably need to adjust that before you put it up, which I'm going to do in a bit, but it does have a mechanism, for example here, where it stopped because it realised that uh, it was in the way, that thing, so yeah, it is pretty cool this thing. If you've got any questions, just let me know, but yeah, thank you.